So we have a beautiful, so we have a beautiful. <laughs> The other two are going to join it. Well, welcome back to the future location of Cottage Farmstead. I'm Rebecca and this is my husband Nathan. And as you can tell, we are not at our suburban homestead, but we are on our future land. And we're here today to take some more accurate measurements of the property line because we were trying to get some quotes for fencing, how many posts we might need, where do we want gates, uh, how many wires do we want, strands, do we want woven wire. We're just kind of walking the perimeter and looking more critically today. And for this measuring purpose, we're going to use a wackometer. I don't know what that's what it's called, but essentially it is a tape measure on a wheel. So we'll be able to walk around the perimeter figure out how many T-posts we need and corner posts, just so that we can accurately figure out both what the cost of the fence will be, but also the length of it. And we have done measuring using the GIS map that Anderson County provides, but we're not sure if that's like 100% accurate. It's just using the satellite image, so we're gonna get a more accurate measurement today. First stop is here at our future home site. You can see the stakes here. We do want access into the woods because we'd like to keep pigs. The creek is down there. So we will want some sort of gate back here. So we're gonna kind of sight around and see where we want access. Well, that looks more like the logical place because it's already open. We're thinking uh, the back door of our house is actually gonna be right around here. So, We'll have to take a look and see if there's a nice opening on this side. Yeah, it could be cool to have it a little bit more of a compression and then open up a little bit so that it's not as visible. So I'm going to use my phone just as a simple tool to take note of how many corner posts we need. Uh, for this will be helpful just to know what type of bracing we're going to need for the infrastructure. It also will give me an opportunity once we have the circumference of the field to work out some math pertaining to how many fencing posts that we need. We're going to start here at the site of the well since we already have that marked and use that as our starting point for taking a walk around the property. My dad said not to worry about the gate behind their place. Okay. Watch out for the spider web! Right there. We definitely want a gate here, I think, don't we? Because this is our most direct access to the creek. Oop, I just walked into the spider web. And if we put it right here, this will be natural bracing for a corner post. So it'd be very easy to have the support for that uh, right here. So as you can see along this side, we have a lot of lower branches and brush. And we're planning on keeping quite a bit of this. We're gonna cut it up to a couple feet above the fence, but we're gonna allow some of the shrubbery to be a kind of like a living fence for us. It gives us privacy from the lot next door. We also know that there's deer and turkeys on the property. So it gives us a little bit more privacy from the wildlife as well, because we don't want them eating our garden or our fruit. So we're gonna try and create some paths for them to the creek that go around our property. So we have less chance of them eating our garden. One of the ways we're doing that is allowing there to be a little bit of a living fence above our actual electric fence. So where are we now? 772 feet. This is corner post number three. Access to the neighbor's property. Huh. That could be handy. So we have a beautiful, so we have a beautiful, <laughs> So we have a beautiful hedge of wild blackberries here. We weren't here at the right time to catch how much production it has, but if we mulch it and just do well with knocking the canes down each year, we're hoping to be able to get some great wild blackberry uh, production here, whether it's for self canning or selling. It's really nice to have that. That's a lot of it. It keeps going all the way that way. It's well plenty. 
So it might be good to just clear these smaller trees right out here so that we can create a straight line for the field. So that'd make the fence row a lot easier to maintain and prevent the need for an extra corner post here. Yeah, because it's not that many. It's pretty narrow there. It's like a juniper and a couple saplings and mm -hmm. some brush. Not bad at all. No. Nah. So he's walking towards where our driveway entrance is going to be cut in. And so we're definitely going to need a corner post over here where we'll have a gate. You think we'll need a gate or do you think we'll need a corner post right here? Yep, we'll need a corner post there. Then the one at the gate. The one at the gate, the one on the, on the other side. side. So we're going along the road frontage here. We're going to have the fence as close as we can without interfering with right away to the road so that the cows can help maintain the perimeter and we don't have to bow as much. So we have a fuzzy plant down here that's called common mulane. It's a great medicinal plant, but it does give us a good idea of what's happening to the soil. In this particular location, it shows that we have a very low nitrogen content, which isn't too worrisome because we're so close to the road, but it is an area where we'll want to over time to improve the pasture. Tree. Yeah, a straight line from here to the side of the mulberry over there. Mm -hmm. So we're at 2,000 feet. All right, so we're here at the shack, probably close to halfway, 2,000 feet. And we're going to put a corner post here. We're going to graze back here as well, at least in the beginning, because we're not going to be doing a whole lot with the shack the first couple of years. So these are going to be more temporary posts along here as we definitely have plan changes in the future. So you see there's no point in us like maintaining this. We might as well let the cows nibble on it. Mm -hmm. But we'll definitely need to put some doors on that house so the cows don't help themselves to some shelter. <laughs> so we've made it almost all the way around. Figured out a couple of places that we need some more wood post or corner post. We need a little more strength. Behind me there is quite the slope, so we're gonna add an extra wood post there just to help with the tension of a high tensile wire. And then here, we're planning on adding a gate going into the woods right here. The reason we're doing that is there's currently a deer path that goes, let me get you over here. The deer path goes from right there, right through our house and where we want our garden, into the woods going to the creek. So what our hope is, is that we're gonna fence this and have a hot wire, keep a lot of the brush so that they can't jump the fence as easily. And then over here, we're gonna be putting in a, a gate and then leaving a little bit of a strip along this edge over here so that they have an alley that they can go through that takes them to the creek so that we can kind of train them to take a slightly different route. We're planning on getting a livestock guarding dog at some point. We don't want to like prevent the deer at all from being in our area. We just don't want them running through our garden. So we're gonna have them trot along here and they can still have access to the creek down at the bottom of the ravine over there. You've almost made it, Daisy girl. You can trot across the finish line, look at you. Did it. How many feet? 3,840. Wow. The GIS mat was really close then. That's pretty impressive. 3,840. The GIS map was about 4,000 feet along the edge. So we are pretty good there. Okay, I count this. One, two, three. 30 corner posts? 30 corner posts. It's hard to read it on my screen because I have to put lines. Next time I'll do X's or something like that. That's easier to differentiate. <laughs> Well, we've made it all the way around the perimeter. It is almost 4,000 feet. We will be in great shape when we're walking that perimeter more frequently. We thank you for joining us. Stay tuned for many more videos as we continue with the progression towards acquiring this land. We'll continue to update you on anything that continues to develop and also take you along the journey of starting our homestead. So don't forget to subscribe. Catch you next time.